Hey guys, welcome to this video. This is going to be my Spider-Man Far From Home ending and post credit scene explained video. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any Marvel videos later this year. Okay, so what is going on? So at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home, Peter swings through the city with his now new girlfriend, MJ, played by Zendaya. So this film, actually, just quickly before we get into the explanation, was really great. You can check out my review, that will be in the description below. That is actually in written form. It's also on Rotten Tomatoes. I gave it a 4 stars out of 5, so that's just my consensus for the film. I loved it, I thought it was really good. Much better than Homecoming. And the ending and the post credit scenes were kind of mind-blowing. I freaked out, and everyone freaked out, because we were in a press screening and it was in an IMAX cinema and there was loads of people and we just all simultaneous had these old fuck moments where we just shouted out and we just absolutely lost it. Okay, so Peter swings through the city, like I said, with his new girlfriend MJ. So they're swinging through New York, we're finally back to Manhattan, I do believe, because, you know, we've been in Europe this whole film and then we're back, we're, you know, doing the normal Spider-Man swinging through the city, a bit like Sam Raimi's film. And so, then we find out via a news report on the screen that Mysterio actually recorded a video. And so, prior to that, we actually find out Mysterio's a fake, he's not, you know, a hero, he's pretending and... He is in sorts not a real villain, but he has villainous ways to try and become a hero to be the new Iron Man. And so Mysterio dies, but secretly, he'd actually recorded a video exposing Peter as Spider-Man. And this is one of the oh shit moments. So then we get the reveal that the controversial news outlet, the Daily Bugle, exists. We haven't seen that. We didn't see that in Homecoming or anything. I don't even think we saw it in Amazing Spider-Man, correct me if I'm wrong, but anyway, so we find out the Daily Bugle exists, and the Daily Bugle exposes this video, because, you know, they're very controversial, as it says, and we get the return of J. Jonah Jameson, played by the one and only J.K. Simmons, aka Tenzin in The Legend of Korra, aka he's in everything, he's in Whiplash, he's in La La Land, what a great actor, he was in the original Spider-Man films, and he was J. Jonah Jameson, so he's back once again. This was the major oh shit moment where everyone, including me, in the cinema, shouted out, Oh shit. So loud. We all freaked out. You guys are gonna freak out if you've watched it, I'm sure all of you have, if you've obviously watched the old Spider-Man films, because they're the best, and so maybe this sets up a bit of continuity where maybe there was another version of Spider-Man in the past or maybe it's like an alternate Earth thing. You know, they introduced the idea of the multiverse in this film, but obviously didn't go through with it. But I feel like there's going to be some sort of reveal at some point that there is the multiverse and this may link into how you're going to link Sam Raimi's films to the new films. And so yeah, for now, this is a different version of J. Jonah Jameson, but he's played by J.K. Simmons, so that is a massive massive easter egg for the old spider-man films and it's just such a great reveal and so he rolls the footage that has been edited and doctored i'm not sure if it was mysterio he did it before he died or he sent it into the daily bugle and then they edited it so it looked like spider-man was actually a fake and then mysterio actually reveals that peter is spider-man to the world and we had the same ending as homecoming where Peter yells, what the, and he's about to swear, and it's cut off. And so this will change the MCU massively, because now everyone knows, just like how everyone knows that Iron Man was Tony Stark, but obviously he revealed it. But in this, Peter has been exposed, this young kid, by the Daily Bugle, so they're going to be massive. And so going forward, everyone knows Spider-Man is actually Peter Parker. Like, everyone at his school and everything, and it's all going to sort of make sense, and now he's going to become a target, and I feel like this is where we go into the Green Goblin, this is where we go into the Hobgoblin, and stuff like that. I really hope the next villain is one of the Goblins. I'm really, fingers crossed, praying for the Hobgoblin. He's my favourite Spider-Man villain. And I think it would make sense to do Green Goblin this time, because now we know who he is, we know that Spider-Man is Peter Parker, 
we can link that back in to him having Harry, you know, a version of Harry being introduced in this film, you know, Oscorp coming in. I feel like this is the perfect time to get back to that story, but obviously do it in a different way. So let me know in the comments down below, what do you think about all of that? I think that is the perfect chance with him being revealed with J. Jonah Jameson coming in, The Daily Bugle. I feel like we can go back to that old story because we've had two films that are completely different from all the other films. And I feel like it's about time we go back to those core characters and we sort of reintroduce the idea of Harry Osborne and everything that goes on with Oscorp normally in the comics but also in the past films. And so yeah, the edited footage is rolled. He's revealed to all of New York, presumably to the whole world, that yeah, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And so this is going to change the MCU on the fact that going into Phase 4, we're going to have the solution to this. And he's going to have to deal with the ramifications. I don't know what film we're going to find out about these ramifications because the next Spider-Man film obviously isn't coming out next or anything. It'll be like two years or so, fingers crossed. And then will obviously get whatever the new story is but maybe in between that he may be in another film i'm not too sure but for now we got black widow we got the eternals and a bunch of other projects but they're not very much so linked to spider-man so we'll have to wait and see but that's going to be massive going forward and so the last post credit scene actually reveals that nick fury and maria hill aren't nick fury and maria hill they are talos and Sorin. From Captain Marvel you guys gotta freak the fuck out that was nuts I absolutely did not expect that and this was one of the oh shit moments where we all just shouted out oh shit what is happening so they've been them for the whole film they've been pretending to be Nick and Maria they've done all the missions they've been acting in the same role that Nick and Maria would normally do so we didn't have any reason to question it because they are essentially following orders from the real Nick Fury and obviously from Maria Hill, but we don't know where the real Maria is right now, but the real Nick Fury is revealed to be on a not so good looking beach. You could tell it's CGI, you could tell it's on a green screen, and that makes sense because they reveal it's only a hologram, and he's actually on a space station, a scroll space station, and so the scrolls are going to be massive going forward. So it's revealed this massive space station that we've never ever seen in the MCU. Nick Fury's sort of commanding it. He's got all the scrolls working for him. They're obviously fine and they're safe now after Captain Marvel after all these years. And so Captain Marvel was obviously met with Nick Fury and then with Nick Fury she's taken him to the space station obviously where she's been with the scrolls the whole time so I love the link between Captain Marvel and Spider-Man I think it's absolutely brilliant and so like I said the scrolls are going to be massive going forward because Talos and Sorin played a massive role in this film even if we didn't know it and so with Captain Marvel being a major character going forwards with Spider-Man being a major character and obviously Nick Fury sticking around that means we're going to soon get the reveal of what the space station actually is and I've got a theory this could be the beginning of S.W.O.R.D. S -W -O -R -D, the space station that stops incoming threats in the comics but introduced in the MCU. And so what is S.W.O.R.D.? So S.W.O.R.D. in the comics is basically like S.H.I.E.L.D. and it, it's all acronyms. It's S.W.O.R.D. like S.H.I.E.L.D. is an acronym. And so S.W.O.R.D. actually stands for Sentient World Observation and Response Department and this is in our normal earth and so it's a counter-terrorism and intelligence agency which deals with threats from extraterrestrial places so out in space and so it's a subdivision of shield so this makes sense that they would introduce this have nick fury in charge because you know he's in charge of shield and now he would be in charge of sword and so it seems to be that this is what they're going for going forward this is going to be a base we know the Avengers headquarters got blown up, so maybe the sword base is going to be where a lot of the action is going to be rooted from. And so this is what's going to be happening. And so in the comics, it basically stops outer space threats. And so this could be what Nick Fury is commanding. It makes a lot of sense. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe. 
for more Marvel videos so you don't miss them even though my name is the DC TV show on YouTube if you guys have been here for a while you know we make Marvel videos and whatever videos we want to make it's just we're mainly based on DC so even if you don't like DC subscribe because we will have Marvel videos anytime there's a film out there's a trailer and so on so thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you guys later goodbye